engineer type tank one too, however you want to call me, I don't really care. And today we are taking a look at uh, a game that I had recently in my M48 pattern. And today is Friday the 11th. So you might have noticed that there is some kind of schedule placed on my account right now. And that is three videos a week. And I'm trying to keep that number up. And what I'm trying to do is release a video on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Friday if it is possible. Um, obviously now, I finished my exams. And I do have some free times on my hand now. And I really want to make the most of it. Same goes for my YouTube channel. And I really want to try and see where it goes. The problem now is just you have to find ideas, right? To fill these days with, with content. It's going to be pretty damn hard sometimes to find ideas. So I thought I'd just sit down and brainstorm a little bit. And I thought today we could make a video about actually first the gameplay. Obviously the M48 on Erlenberg. Um, a complete tier 10 match. And then afterwards we're going to take a look at the map. And we're going to analyze strategically how this game went about. And uh, I can give you guys some tips on certain maps. Uh, or basically how I play the maps with my vehicle types. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's probably going to be a, a longer video. I'd say about 30 minutes. Uh, maybe not 30 minutes, but stick around. It should be fine. So we're playing... The M48A Patton, the American Tier 10 medium vehicle, and it is an absolute blast to play. I'm currently trying to pre-mark this vehicle, and it's rather difficult because you'll have to do about, I think, 4,500 average damage per game, spotted, assisted, and um, damage that you've dealt yourself to be able to get the 95% mark. And... Yeah, when you just have one bad game where you don't do 2,000 damage or 3,000 damage, you're going to drop by like 0.7%. <laughs> and that really hurts. So, currently what you can see on the minimap is that we have already lost three vehicles. And that we get spotted by the Sheridan over there. And that we're all by ourselves on this flank at the moment. What you can notice right here is that we are obviously outnumbered. And we are not having the best Kind of day we get very lucky right there that we do bounce a thousand four hundred and thirty hp worth of damage by several very dangerous tier 10 vehicles you can see in the top left corner we only took a hit from the little part then we bounce the object 268 version 4 and the little part once once more and what I'm trying to do right now is to fall back because I noticed without the support here, I cannot play that position. Now, what I'm talking about is the position F0 and E0. You, you guys probably noticed when you're playing this map that medium tanks, tank destroyers like to huddle up around there because you have a couple of trees. With good gun depression, you can actually work the ridge line very nicely. And what you can do is you can exceed or put pressure on the enemy team that is sitting at D9. Now, at the same time, you have to be careful once you get lit on that position at E0, you can easily be shot from the position of A0 and A9, and also from the middle part. So, what happens now is that we are falling back, we are regrouping with uh, our artillery, while at the same time we are trying to communicate to our artillery that he should move to our T92. You can see that they have practically gained the right flank of this map, and uh, we have lost two more vehicles than they have but we do exceed some or we do have some certain amount of map awareness and i think map uh, control and that is on the very left side of the map where the is4 is currently fighting with the fv and the heavy tanks are currently fighting in the middle now there are always like three hot spots on this map now the castle, everything around the castle, then obviously the uh, D9 and the E0 area over here, and the middle part where the heavy tanks and some tank destroyers like to mingle and you know do their damage. So what I'm trying to do right now in my M48 is to cover the right flank because I'm expecting any moment now 
a medium tank to rush in and to destroy our, the artillery and then maybe flank around. But that doesn't happen. So what am I doing right now? I'm trying to fall back further into the corner of the map while having the Amex 13105 over here at the base to spot the right side of the map. I knew that we had a light tank over there, so I didn't bother to stay there because I know the light tank can take care of the entire flank. Unfortunately, the light tank decides to move away because I'm not sure what he wants to do. He wants to follow us, maybe spot for us over here in the bushes. And you can see that the, our area over here is rather crowded in comparison to other places of the map. We have a T50, uh, no, a, yeah, T50 slash 51 TBP in the left side and a Progetto also sitting in the corner. It looks rather bleak for us at this moment. They have a tank advantage of right now five vehicles and we have a Type 5 Heavy that is isolated at G5 fighting for his life. We do take out the bad chat and you can see in a very short amount of time our team manages to take out several vehicles on their side. What happens right here is uh, this unlucky GW drives into us, is dead anyhow and I'm using him as a shield and I'm also kind of the reason why he maybe kind of died in that situation. So, it has gotten even worse. We're now four vehicles, no artillery support, and they have a two tank advantage on us. They do have artillery support on their end, and they're closing in on our position. What they do not have currently is the ability to spot us. And if you use the bushes to your advantage, the gun depression to your advantage, the camouflage to your advantage, you can see just exactly what you can do to enemy heavy tanks or vehicles that are spotted and that cannot engage you. This IS-4 on the other side right there spotted out in the open and we engaged them one on one. They actually decided to push us one on one and it didn't really work out for them very nicely. So I'm just deciding right here to spot for my team. Now, I haven't done massive amounts of damage, but combined total, it is 3,300, and that is decent at this rate. I'm trying to spot the uh, FE right there, but it turns out that the Amex 13105 actually spotted him, so I didn't get the assistance bonus. We do know that there's a Leopard 1 over here, and he actually makes a huge mistake, which is to move up, get spotted by the TVP, get tracked by me, and then take an entire clip from a TVP into the face. That was a full HP Leopard 1 that was dead in about 8 seconds. And that is impressive. So we're at a total of 2,877 damage dealt and 2,449 damage assisted. And you can see, just by sitting in the back, Using the bushes to our advantage and letting the enemy come one by one, we were able to turn this game around in a very quick fashion and without losing very much HP. The only shot that we took in was from the object for 30, you know, the Leopard on the other side of the map, on the right side. So if I would have stayed there, I would have been engaged by several tanks all by myself and I would have died very early on in the game where I would not have been able to actually assist my team in the later stages of the game and possibly would have lost this game. So what we did is we bundled up together and although we didn't really communicate, the teamwork by working the ridge line together, by using spotting and using the bushes to our cover and by not getting exposed on the side because they actually just kind of completely ignored the side right there, we were able to hold that corner. And I think it's very interesting to see how quickly a game in this in, in this universe of World of Tanks can turn on its head just by changing a position and by playing a lot more strategically. Because basically what the enemy team did was they were way too self-confident in their ability to push us that they basically pushed us one by one and then died off one by one.
So they gave away advantage of five tanks in a short period of about one minute where they were on equal terms with us. So how did this game work out? Let's see, we're gonna go over to the map manager and we'll take a closer look at the strategic side of this game. After we just witnessed the game that I had in my M48 Patton on Erlenberg, let's take a look at the strategic overview on the map of Erlenberg and how we managed to win that game. And at the same time, I can give you guys some tips or basically some advice on how I play this map because everyone is playing it a bit differently, but I'd say I have a general decent amount of knowledge on how I play most of my maps since I just have so many games. And it's very important to know the, the different uh, places on every map that you're playing. So before we're going to place any units onto the map, um, I will just show you guys what this map is all about. And um, then we'll get right into the placements of the vehicles. So what we're looking at right here is the updated version of Erlenberg that has been added or that has been updated, I think, uh, about a year ago now. And it consists of three main engagement zones, as I like to call them. I think we can actually do that just like in the military. I'm not sure if they have that. Yeah, every army is a bit different. Oh, no, actually, that's the wrong tool. So we're going to do it like this. <laughs> actually, nope. That is the wrong tool. We're going to make it with a circle. I'm going to use the... Oops. Yeah, I don't use this tool very often, but it's very nice if you're trying to have games, uh, Clan Wars games, people use these services very often. So we're going to be placing this one right here, the circle for main engagement. Then we're going to be placing a bigger circle in the middle. And then we're going to be placing another medium-sized circle over here on the right side. So basically what always happens on this map is that the people in the heavy vehicles, let's place a couple of enemy heavy tanks and a couple of friendly heavy tanks. Um, they decide to storm the middle area and fight it out over here. So they are competing for the middle and they are shooting each other trying to get the the control of the middle part and it's always a very heavy fight and always a very ugly fight to be fair because there are several alleyways that enemy vehicles can shoot into and now we're going to be talking about the very important parts of this map so actually this is the wrong position since we came from the south This is actually where the medium tanks like to sit and where they try to outplay these guys over here that are at the same time trying to compete for this position. And there is basically a brawl between these two sides. What the team in the north has as, as an advantage is tank destroyers in the very back that can actually shoot at this hill if you're not careful enough. And they can stay hidden very, very easily. What they can also do at the same time from that position is they, through certain holes, they can actually shoot into the middle part. And that makes the middle from the south a bit more difficult to hold, in my opinion, because you do not have the same kind of line of fire that you have from this position over here in the north um, compared from the positions uh, over here. These position, this is basically kind of mirrored in a, in a sense, because usually tank destroyers like to sit right here. Then we do have some tank destroyers on this ridge line as well, because from this position, this is the reason why this position is just so important right here. We're going to make a little square out of it. If you can hold this position as basically uh, the southern team, what you can do right here is you can actually shoot into the city from that position over there. The problem is just, I think this is, oh, that was the wrong one. The problem is just, um, well, if there are enemy vehicles over here, 
right at this position at d9 they can obviously spot you uh, if you're too close to them or if you drive into the uh, into their sight you know by shooting when the bush is transparent then the enemy vehicles from the city and from the uh, back part of a0 can actually shoot you in that position so that is why you have to engage these guys first take them out or just stay in the very back right over here where they cannot spot you and you can still at the same time shoot at the guys in the city so that is basically why this position is so important what we haven't talked about is the uh city map or uh, the, the castle excuse me so we had a couple of light and uh, no medium tanks and tank destroyers taking the castle right here and they had i think one or two uh light tanks and i think one heavy tank um competing for the castle this castle area right here obviously allows you if you take it to either head directly to the enemy base or for them head directly around to our base and what you want to do is when you get this position over here at the castle you want to be able to put some pressure on the guys either sitting in the middle because they have to retreat if you actually take this one side and then uh, move to the enemy base they have to fall back like right here or same goes for our team they have to fall back and engage them while they're trying to move around here to our base so what happened was that we had quite a lot of vehicles bear with me we had quite a lot of vehicles sitting over here and we overpowered these vehicles on this side that were trying to to hold um to hold the castle area and we managed to knock them out so what happened was we actually took over this position but at the same time we sacrificed this position this position right here we lost, I think we lost one heavy tank or something like that. And I decided to fall back. So what I did was I fell back right here to go into a defensive position. Actually, it wasn't that far right here. And to be able to look at that position right here. What they did was that tank destroyers that they had it's a bit confusing right now so we're going to move, remove some of these uh, markings they moved the tank destroyers into this position and medium tanks and they had the same mirrored image as we had on the other side so we had two flanks that were either uh, that were uh, controlled by one team and we had a middle fight that was turning out to be in the favor of the enemy team. We started to lose heavy tanks. They started to advance and get more aggressive in the middle part and decided to push over onto the other side. Quite a few of their tank destroyers were actually with them on the journey right there. And instead of pushing, so we deleting some of these infos right here. Instead of pushing around, into our base and put even more pressure on the guys that are sitting in in the city right here and the guys that are still over here and uh, some of them some of our allies actually pushed further up north and then got destroyed over here so we lost we lost our tank destroyers we only had a couple of medium tanks left in the light tank and what happened was we only had a very small area of influence left for us and we basically had to defend in this one sector. So we're going to draw this sector right now. And this was the only sector that we were still in control of. So the big misplay by the enemy team was instead of actually bundling their forces and use their numerical advantage that they had of, they, they obviously had like five or six tanks more, than us and to push right into our base or maybe push right over here into this position 
what they did was they moved one by one. Actually, that was us, so we're going to delete this one because we moved even further back. They went one by one this route towards us. The IS-4 was destroyed right here next to the castle, being outspotted by a light tank. Our light tank actually right here. And what happened was that the Type 5 Heavy right here, fighting for his life, managed to knock out another four vehicles. So actually, the team managed to knock out another four vehicles. And the thing is, if you're in this position over here, in the very left corner, and you use these bushes to your advantage, you have firing options all the way over to our base and uh, you can do quite a lot of damage so what did not happen was this push over here did actually never occur except for until like the last second they never pushed into our position with several tanks the only vehicle that managed to get close to us was the leopard one the object um 130 i think no what was it the object 120 actually got stuck over here and then knocked out by us and the panth uh, no the leopard actually moved way too close completely ignored us here in the corner and tried to engage the light tanks and medium tanks at h uh, h1 and g1 and got knocked out by the um, TVP and by me. So what happened was their numerical advantage that they had was very quickly lost because they pushed single-handedly, one by one, the direct route, got outspotted by us, got knocked out one by one, then they lost basically the middle they started to panic they sent the leopard one <laughs> to engage us right over here the leopard one was knocked out and in the end there was only one vehicle remaining and that was currently sitting in our cap and that was the fv 4005 he was outspotted very quickly on destroyed and we were able to very easily maneuver our way from this back part to their base and knock out the last two remaining enemy artillery pieces. So to basically recap this game was we had three main area of operation or operations. We had the middle part, we had the eastern part and the western part and we lost the eastern part and we lost the middle part. We only got hold of the eastern part and what happened with the eastern part was it wasn't very important at the beginning but in the end because of the advantage that we had here and uh, how we managed to actually reposition ourselves and use the camo to our advantage we were able to turn this five what was it i think five on ten situation into a very easy win for our team so yeah, never push by yourself. Always keep in mind that even if you have like double the numbers, no game is won. Or a lot of games are won by that. that that's standard most of the time. But no game is immediately won unless you destroy all the vehicles. So what they had to do actually was because we were still sitting over here in the bushes If they actually started to cap the, the base with, let's say, two vehicles, we would have actually had to move out into the open to spot them because there is a tree line right here that obstructs your view. And basically what we would have had to do was either send the light tank to spot them or do it by ourselves and if we had to spot our cap and defend our cap at the same time while they are pushing or they're just sitting back and sniping us while we have to reset the cap 
we would have easily lost this game because they had the artillery advantage, they had the tank advantage, and they had basically us backed into a corner. What they didn't do, what they weren't able to do, was spot us, and that was the big issue because we all all had good camouflage and we were all experienced tankers. So that's exactly what happened. They lost all the important key positions. They pushed us without caring about any of the strategic value or strategic positioning. And what happened was basically their greed cost them the game. So I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, little insight in World of Tanks or in, into map knowledge, especially um, with the gameplay combined at the first at the beginning. Um, I'm always trying to implement new ideas, try new things out, and I think this this might be a very nice addition. Just to talk a little bit about maps. What I think, what I can tell you guys about this map is that there is always a possibility to fall back. There's always a position you can take upon when you've lost your first position. Now, the problem is if you have an engagement in the middle because you're a heavy tank, you need the cover, uh, you need the cover. It is always very difficult if you lose one of the sides and you have to fall back. I think in the north, it's easier to fall back than in the south because if the enemy vehicles actually do, uh, excuse me right here. If the enemy vehicles or enemy team actually does have this uh, hill over here, they can very easily punish you while you're trying to uh, fall back into your base. And you do not have uh, the direct uh, direct cover that you do have here in the, in the north, in my opinion. But how can you counter these guys that are on this hill? What happens if you lose this hill right here? You lose the hill battle from the south and they're starting to trail into your southern base. What are you going to do then? Well, what you can do is take up defensive positions over here because there are a couple of trees. Then there is a bush right here and right here. What you can do if you have several vehicles because uh, this drive over here, oh, excuse me, let me, this push to the base is very open. You have a lot of open ground that you have to cover and you do not have any kind of obstacles in the way. That also means at the same time, you don't have any potential cover positions where you can hide behind. So the Southern team can very easily from these position, these positions, spot them, this position especially right here, spot them, stay camouflaged, while the other positions over here can stay hidden and fire at them at the same time while they're coming in. So you can counter them very effectively. And if this doesn't work, you fall back just like we did, and you go over to this position and you defend the cap from over there. Now, this is all nice and dandy if they're not pushing the other flank at the same time. If it happens on the other flank, there are some great positions right here. These work out great as well. It's just a little bit harder to actually stay hidden in this position right here at the H, H1. But the same goes for the south. If you basically lose the hill battle and red is actually pushing towards you, what you can do is you can use these positions right here to your advantage and it takes quite a while and a lot of open space before they can actually get to this position but at the same time if they do control the middle they can actually easily shoot you when you're sitting in the back of the map the issue right here though is if they do completely overtake the eastern part there are only a couple of positions right here that you can use to your advantage. Uh, this used to be a little bit different um, because there used to be a little hill that a lot of people like to use. Now there are a couple of branches and a little bit of a, of a slight uh, hill 
but it doesn't cover you as well as is it as it did previously but at the same time you can use this this little island here use it as a little forwarding uh, spotting position where you can actually spot these guys engage the base at the same time uh, but well obviously you do have to have a little bit of control of the over the middle so basically most of the time when you're losing the middle and one of the flanks the game is over doesn't really matter what you do uh, there are just very few occurrences where that doesn't happen and our game basically showed you what happens when you are being pushed into the corner in the south but the same could have happened in the north in this corner if we would have played it strategically strategically well but it's a little bit different so i hope you guys did enjoy this uh, if you did comment like and subscribe i'm still kind of uh, trying this out a little bit um I'm not sure if it's going to come over as great as <laughs> as it was in my head, but uh, let's see. And uh, maybe next week I'm going to do another map review with this kind of style and uh, we can improve upon that. Until then, I hope I see you guys on the next one. Peace out.